Lagos is not just popular because it's a state of aquatic splendor, but because it continues to set a marked precedence in social administration. It's a delight to bring you reports of happenings in this state. This is Inside Lagos. I'm Adi Doja. Salam Adeni. We'll be right back after this break. Please stay with us. If I carry you go banana, my guy, you go love Lagos. If I carry you go to a Lagos, you go love Lagos. If I carry you go, you know my guy, you go love Lagos. Sepa sepa see the police, governor Amba do go for she. Helicopter look for look you cannot deny you no see. Father, give us the love to me, Sha. Oh, my God, give us the love to me, Go to go to go to the love to me, Sha. It's a zero to the love to me, Sha. It never finished. All of us don't get new motto. It never finished. Yeah, you tell me, yeah, you tell me, what's up? Oh, Imbo, eh, you call me, oh, Imbo. Eh, oh, Imbo, eh, why you speaking, oh, Imbo? If I carry you go, you catch up my guy. You go love Lagos, yo. If I carry you go, but I agree, my guy. You go love Lagos, yo. If I carry you go to Lagos Island, you go love Lagos, yo. Ele jamo, ele tiko, ele baje no. Why why you speaking no Igbo? No Igbo, you the Lagos no Igbo. If I carry you go go road to my guy, you go love Lagos yo. If I carry you go to work by my guy, you go love Lagos yo. If I carry you go be just my guy, you go love Lagos. Check my check my city police. Cause no I'm but you go Helicopter low for Loki You cannot deny you don't see Step by step by see the police Cause no I'm but you go Helicopter low for Loki You cannot deny you don't see Glad to know you there. Lagos State Governor Akim Umiambode says if Nigeria must develop and improve its gross domestic product GDP, persons of good conscience and high integrity must be in charge of the economy. Ambode said this when he received the leadership of the Full Gospel Business Men's Fellowship Nigeria on a courtesy visit in Alausa. The delegation was led to the governor's office by the national president of the fellowship, Ifani Odedu. The governor believes the country would benefit a lot when good business practice is combined with excellent religious conscience. The economy of Lagos cannot be that productive to improve the GDP if there are not people with good consciences. And this is what you stand for. It's not enough for you to have resources. It's not enough for you to have people that can do productivity. But again, there are people who have to be drivers to arrive at the GDP or the kind of nation that we want. One thing that I can assure you of is our continual support. Like you have noticed also in the last three and a half years, we have ensured there has been proper religious harmony in this state. There has never been any single incident of <laughs> So obviously, 
we recognize the fact that Lagos is a cosmopolitan state, but irrespective of that, you allow a whole lot of freedom of space because that's the thing that actually drives productivity. We appreciate the kind of grace that God has bestowed upon you. In the past number of years that you have served this state as the executive governor, we have seen your doggedness, we have seen your passion, we have seen your integrity, we have seen the spirit of professionalism and excellence with people-oriented programs, very impactful. Suffice it to say that you have left a great legacy in the sense of history. I am persuaded that for us to accomplish excellence in our governance, we can never downplay the place of integrity, the place of transparency, and the place of signage and people-oriented programs. This was further emphasized at the closing session of the National Convention of the Food Gospel Businessmen Fellowship held at the Police College in Ikeja. In his remarks, Governor Bode attributed the successes the state has recorded over the years to the fact that the government recognizes the role of God in its progress and growth. The Full Gospel Business Men's Fellowship Nigeria said posterity will be kind to the governor for putting in place numerous projects to empower the people. Has made him a visionary leader, has made him a charismatic leader, and has made him an indefatigable leader endeared to the heart of the people of Lagos and admired by those outside Lagos. For the past three and a half years, it has been a giant stride to move Lagos forward. Three and a half years, it looks short, but it's good enough. Lagos State Emergency Management Agency is appealing to residents to make use of its emergency toll-free lines of 112 and 767 during emergency situations. The general manager, Tiami Uadishino, said this at an advocacy campaign. We were there. These are some of the trucks you see at the scene of an accident, each truck bearing names of different emergency responders. They are warming up to hit the streets on a road show to sensitize Lagos residents on the need to make use of the emergency toll-free lines 112 and 767 whenever the need arises. This is where response starts in the case of an emergency. The calls are thereafter transferred here. Then the location of an accident is identified on these monitors through the CCTV cameras located at strategic areas in the state. Thereafter, relevant agencies are notified for immediate actions. The general manager of the Lagos Emergency Management Agency, Tianyu Adeshino, wants Lagos residents to be better aware of the readiness of relevant authorities to respond to emergency calls. This is why the reason the emergency decided to hit the streets spreading this message. I want to appeal to Lagosians that the emergency toll-free lines 112 and 767 are there to protect you and I. And those numbers are also absolutely free when you call. But it's important for us to know that don't call that number to, to make fun. It is a serious number. Every time you waste time calling that number, you are denying some people who have the right to make a call, genuine calls, the use of that number. 
So save one life today by making sure that you do not put our first call into the 112 767 platform. But how responsive has the emergency been? They are performing good. You know, because ever since in the, in the, in the 90s, in the 80s, in the way there's accidents, it's out to the fall, and you know, uh, that's a, a rescue team to come. But now, most just call uh, Lasama, that's either 121 or 76, under some hours, I just talk about they are available. It's very good. It's a good one. So far, they are, they are up, to the, up to the game. Uh, recently, I've uh, witnessed one or two incident which they responded you know uh, rapidly i think they are doing well the most recent one is the one that's the one that happened at uh, um, my 12th they call it um, one uh, a vehicle coming from the east you know uh, swamp into the into the river from into the river and uh, the the, uh, the lasema people were able to they, i mean they responded uh, you know quickly and a lot of life was saved they are working better. Too. If there's accident, they call him. They will come there with the time. Squad one, one to seven six seven. They have been doing their work very well. I can see they are doing their work. From what they have, what we have seen so far, they have been performing. Uh, the expectations is been okay. We, if not the uh, last time, many lives would have been lost. But so far, so good. I don't know if they will keep the tempo. Success will be recorded on their behalf. They have been performing their job effectively and I think the legal statement have done very well by creating an, an agency that take care of this emergency because Lagos is thickly populated and if you don't have any such uh, any kind of thing certainly many lives will be lost but the emergency responders believe they have been on top of their game in disaster management for many a time if you could recollect there are some people fair I mean drop into the water around a uh, Tommy Land Bridge before 15 minutes, last time we were there. And they will rescue all, I mean, those that are concerned. If there's any accident, the moment they call that number, that emergency number, is number one, they will be there. We respond appropriately when, whenever we are called to do that. Except we didn't get information. Lagos State government, I give kudos to them because there are never things like this in, any, in Nigeria, only in Lagos State. And since we started about two, three years ago, the response has been so excellent. Tragedies have reduced tremendously in Lagos. In fact, there are so many that you don't even get to know. It is those that happened that people get to know. But the one that want to happen that we prevented, nobody knew. People see colors of tankers taking fuel, and we safely guided them to a particular point, get a new tanker to come and transload into it, and that one continues the journey. The one that is leaking, we stop them from traveling. That is not put before the camera. It is only the one that, you know, maybe upturn or spill the fuel and caught fire that people see there are so many incidences that there are a lot of pipeline vandalization going on in lagos which we responded to you know with the support of the police and the civil defense corps who have an anti-vandal you know unit These are, there are a lot of things going on around lagos current statistics show 90,000 distress calls are received by the agency daily some genuine others pranks these are treated by more than 100 officials of the emergency and authorities are urging residents to place serious calls only on preparations for any emergency during ember months additional says lasema will soon be stationed in some strategic places across the state <laughs> More than 6,000 students have graduated from the Lagos State Government Skills Acquisition Programs aimed at tackling unemployment and poverty. 45-year-old Kola Wole Isijola is one of this year's best graduating students. Isijola, a self-employed graduate, says he was skeptical about the empowerment program but decided to give it a try. He is one amongst these who graduated from the 17 skill acquisition centers owned by the state government. The concept of the Skill Acquisition Center is to fight poverty. So I now thought of something that could be affordable, particularly for people that sell on the streets, like pure water, mineral. Instead of like going to where it's already cold and being ripped off by paying extra for it, we made it affordable so they can just buy, find where to plug it and continue using it. This is just a sample, but what we are trying to do is to fine-tune it, one, to make it lighter, because as you can see, 
one person can lift it up. Secondly, we want to modify it so that most of the parts that are exposed now, you won't see them. Then thirdly, we want to make it find an, make an alternative so that you might not even need electricity. But we are making it step by step. This is just like to show what we have in plan. First, I was skeptical because you know anything government in Nigeria, we are always having our doubts. But eventually when I entered, what really about, uh, moved me was the fact that it, it not it only practical, theoretically and practical because what they emphasize on is 70 percent practical but 30 percent for theory so there is no way you can come out of a skill acquisition center and not be able to defend yourself practically and theoretically and what they encourage us to do is a minimum of three months it so the advantage we have going there is once you tender your letter from a center that is Lagos state recognized the chances of being accepted is very high. So it's now left to you. For the state government, it is time Nigerians termed the fruitless search for unavailable white-collar jobs, reduce poverty and idleness by crossing into the realm of skillfulness and entrepreneurial opportunities through vocational training. Lagos State Deputy Governor Idiata Debule restated that Governor Kiyomiyamode's administration has provided an opportunity for young people to enhance their socio-economic well-being through various programs, including the Ready Set Work Initiative. The training imparted to these graduates is globally certified and moderated by the Lagos State Technical and Vocational Training Board, LASVEB through the Skill Acquisition Unified Syllabus Training Program. Poverty has been a major challenge for developing economies as part of our poverty alleviation strategies. We have provided opportunities for young people to enhance their social economic well-being through vocational skills acquisition. The immediate benefit available to the graduates that we are celebrating today is that they are qualified to assess soft loans from the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund as seed capital to transform their entrepreneurial vision into reality. We are gathered here today to see, feel, and experience the joy of having our trainees in their thousands trooping out to celebrate their attainment of a new status as they have by reason of their training and competencies cross the line between idleness, hopelessness and poverty into the realm of skillfulness and entrepreneurial opportunities which banishes poverty and guarantees hope for a better future. This graduation ceremony is yet another proof that the present administration, ably led by His Excellency, the Governor, Mr. Akin Wumi Ambode, is not paying mere lip service to the issue of empowerment of women and the general populace through acquisition of skills that can make them gainfully engaged and ultimately employ others. I must also commend the state government and the Ministry of Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation for every effort, human and financial resources put in place towards ensuring the success story of today. Economic empowerment is essential to quality of life and national development. To this end, Nigerian human capital and working population should be an advantage. However, the challenge is the alarming unemployment rate. The problem is aggravated by the increasing number of graduates churning out by a universities and unemployable of many. In all of this, women are the worst hit with access to education being lower. 
discrimination in employment, and the problem of unequal pay for similar rules. Thus, creating a need to find alternative to white collar jobs. Wife of the Lagos State Governor, Bolanli Ambodi, believes the vocational skills acquisition program would mark a turning point in the lives of the graduates. What is instructive here is the growing awareness that not only white collar job is capable of generating stable income and giving the good life to our youths and other unemployed persons at good intervals. Thousands of young school leavers, unemployed graduates, and women of all ages are churned out of our skill centers, having been properly trained in training vocations like aluminum fabrication, catering and hotel management, computer studies, dress designing, hairdressing and cosmetology, among several others. This welfare management initiative of the state government has continued to yield encouraging results. It's a unique opportunity to take firm control of your lives through hard work and careful planning, which will in turn give you both personal and financial freedom. Graduates were presented with certificates of competence endorsed by the state's Technical and Vocational Education Board. Many Muslims see Prophet Muhammad's birthday as an event worthy of praise. Muslims use the occasion to thank Almighty Allah and pray fervently for the Prophet. Some faithful told me other reasons Maulid Nabi is worth celebrating. Because of his nature as an ep epitome of love, epitome of peace, knowledge, tranquility, and progress for the generality of a human being. He has contributed immensely toward the, the progress of Islam. Allah sent him is a saint from Almighty Allah. So um, this is why Muslim has to remember his birthday. They also explained why the political life of the Prophet is worthy of emulation. Prophet Muhammad is also a politician who plays his own politics with the fear of Allah. The only Prophet very prayerful, truthful, very kind. He takes care of his people. He cares about the, 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 the Muslims in general, even those non-Muslims. He cares about them. Power is trust. And thinking that, yes, on that day I will be accountable for all I've done, what I've used my power for. You have to think of that last day. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam take people along in his governance. Good governance is paramount for every Muslim that is in power of authority. Shura is recommended in Islam. That is consultation. You have to consult with your people. Prophet Muhammad was born on the 12th of Rabil Awal, the third month in the Islamic calendar, year 570 CE, year of the elephant in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. He was orphaned at six years old, raised under the care of his paternal uncle, Abu Talib, and learned trading and shepherding one of the Prophet's first titles. 
was Al Amin, the trustworthy, and this is due to his honest behavior with people, especially in business, and his truthfulness when speaking of Allah. He got his first revelation of the Holy Quran in the month of Ramadan and began to preach around the age of 40. <laughs> He died at the age of 63 in Medina in 632 AH. After his death, followers of the Islamic religion increased phenomenally worldwide. The Prophet's birthday is commonly marked through religious lectures and reading of the Quran. Others fast on Mondays, which was the day he was born. Muslims don't just remember Prophet Muhammad on the day of his birth, but every day. <laughs> All Muslims seek Allah's mercy on the Prophet at the mention of his name. Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Aside from the love of the Prophet of Islam, clerics say any Muslim who prays for Prophet Muhammad, indeed, prays for himself. Peace be upon him. Inside Lagos wishes the Muslim community happy Maulud Nabi. May the peace of Allah continue to reign on the Prophet of Islam. Peace be upon him. Amade Doja. Salam Adini. See you next time. Bye bye.